That's one of those things. Just one of those things you sort of come across over the years. When you've got one of these masks on, one of these things, the visibility from under there is very restrictive. So you actually end up, instead of like this to observe where you're cutting, you end up way down there because you've got all this obscuration in your way. I can't see the floor. So when you're walking through your workshop, Anything that's in the way, like the exhaust, the um, extract tube or a power cable, you're not aware of it. So everything's like wearing on the neck. It's just something that if you if you come across something and you're prepared to pay a bit more, we haven't got all that lack of visibility. Because you're constantly cranking your head further down to see where you're going. It's just something I found, and of course, by the end of the day, your neck God, is in knots of pain. So there's a the steel in there. There's my last but one Rhodius disc, as I said, I want to use them up. And here we go. Short period of time, yeah, not for half an hour. I've just finished cutting out those uh, strips. Um, now, obviously, how I was cutting it was the piece of steel that I got came in a rectangle, like in this sort of dimension. And what you see is the brush marks of where it's been flat ground. So, I would presume that the grain of the steel runs long ways. It's a bit like having birch ply when you want to cut it. You, you appreciate whether or not the, the sideboard is going to be up or along or aside and how the grain's going to be in terms of its appearance on the side of the sideboard or the drawer or whatever. The same with the steel. It's got a grain in it. So even though that was an offcut, I could have got it 90 degrees out if I hadn't paid attention to the, the, the ground marks of where it had been flat ground. So when you're cutting it, you want to cut with the grain because it's actually going to be stronger. It's like paper, it's got grain in it. But when you're cutting it, I've got a bandsaw, and even though I've got a bimetal blade, it's so much quicker using the mini angle grinder. But the both those tools have the same problem. There's not much torque in it. Now what I do is I try, I, in my mind, I think of motorbike engines. And you've either got a one two five two stroke, ming, okay, or you've got one of those diesel Enfield Robin things that are four hundred diesel singles. Both got about twenty horsepower, but the characteristics are completely different. The two stroke wants to free rev, and the diesel wants to plod. The angle grinder is like a two stroke. Now, when you're actually cutting, hopefully I can get this drawn first time every time. Obviously, because I'm, I'm behind the camera trying to do it. Here, in 3D, is the piece of wood, in piece of steel, sorry, here we go, mistakes already, 
in my vise. There's the jaw vise, and there's the piece of steel in the vise. Okay, so it's in there like that and clamped. And there's my line that I want to cut. So I've got enough clearance for the angle grinder body to fit between the cut and the jaws of the vise. Okay, there they are like that, it's the vise jaws. When the wheel comes in, I only need to cut through four millimeters. And the disc as a whole, on these small ones, is 115. That's how close I am. I'm scary, aren't I? It's 110, all right? So 115 mil across there. You only need to get that disc into the cut about four millimeters. If you plunge that disc right through and out the side, so it's like this, there's your guard on your machine and there's your, there's your grinder coming down like this. You're actually, you're only cutting here and here. All of this surface here, smashing against the cut you've already made, is acting as a grinder and so it's actually slowing it all down. The contact points within the cut is also getting, you know, abraded and there's more heat going into the steel that you don't really want to mess up anyway. So when you're cutting into the steel on the angle grinder, I find it's better to cut from the bottom and work up because your eye is looking down. So you want to start at the bottom and work up. That way you can see into this corner here where you're, where you're cutting and all the way up. But when your actual disc is working on the steel, there's his actual cut. That's the sort of thing you want. It's gone through and it's a bit out the other side. Your eye is here not as close just general direction and you're cutting your line as you go up through the steel the pressure involved in the disc as it's coming around is n hardly anything you're letting this thing spin okay because all that's going to happen is if you put a lot of pressure on it yes you're going to cut through you're going to have more heat involved but the motor on that poor little angle grinder isn't going to be allowed to spin up to its its happy speed of I don't know 10,000 rpm or whatever it is. It's not chunking through like a power hammer. This thing wants to free rev, and if you put too much pressure on it, you're going to strain your motor. I'm sure over the years that I've been putting too much pressure on my grinders, and I came to the conclusion that if I let them spin free like that you can hear the speed let the thing get up to speed cut from the bottom hardly any pressure allow it just to just skim its way through don't project the disc too far out the other side because all you're going to do is wear the disc thing on its faces when all you really want to do is act is put the action on the edge which is here you'll only ruin the sides anyway let it cut with the edges let it cut fast let it cut free and don't put it too far through the, the metal and it will just literally only have that much contact less heat in the steel and your motor is spinning more free because these things if you if you give them a hard life these little angle grinders you probably kill it in about 20 hours but if you let it get up the speed and just go through high speed less strain you'll get a far more life out of your grinder far more life out of your disc because you're only going through a little bit and you're putting less heat into the steel because you're not actu actions on the side of the disc by blasting the disc too far through and out the other side of the, the steel as you're cutting it. And always cut, you can see the grind marks, the flat grind mark, the grind go with the grain. Right, so I've planned them out. There's the one off my template, so that's a new sort of fixing design that's literally 
to fit the stock that I had at the smallest point, 205 mil across. And then the rest of them were just three handed. Little EDC there. It's definitely me in it. Hybrid. So that's a Dane Law rear end. <coughs> so as soon as I'll start cutting those. I've got no time. Anyway, thanks for joining me again. Let those grinders spin. Scott points his blades. Join our next one. Thanks for joining me again.